meal number one is going to be bum.com. I want to talk about where I've been at. Life is a winding road, no telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights, won't stop for traffic lights. And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know if I will ever figure out where the road goes. Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. How is everybody doing today? I'm feeling so much better today. I actually um, don't have any runny nose or any sort of symptoms whatsoever. Um, so I'm feeling 100% better. However, um, I do have to isolate, be at home um, for 10 days since I was exposed. See, that's another thing with this whole COVID thing is I get really confused. The rules, you would think they would have rules set in place. Um, straight across the board but they they don't employers um alberta health and like everybody has different rules for everything so first of all i was actually um when i got tested the nurse that tested me said that i only needed to isolate until i got back my results so i got back my results and um she said then you were fine after that my one employer had said, no, you need to isolate from the last time that you were exposed to that person at work, which puts me for a couple more days now. And then my other job is like, oh yeah, you're fine to come back to work. And you know, everybody has kind of different rules right now and that's very, very frustrating as well um, for people that have been tested or that have symptoms or anything like that for COVID. But you guys it's just so confusing you would think that they would have something like set in stone by now because we've been this in this for over a year but but they don't of course um tell me what it's like where you guys live is it a little bit more structured as far as when you get testing if you test um obviously if you test positive you need to stay home until you don't feel any symptoms that i understand but i mean like when you get tested and it's a negative result what are they telling you guys is it pretty consistent across the board i want to know maybe alberta is just the only one like out to lunch i have no idea you guys but it's frustrating um but i am going to do a what i eat in a day and i am so excited you guys i have figure it out, I guess a recipe. I'm gonna combine two recipes is what I'm going to do. Um, and meal number one is going to be bum.com. It is gonna be so good, you guys. Um, it is definitely like, I would say it's pretty clean. Actually, all the ingredients are clean ingredients. Um, somewhat, you know. It's gonna be a sweet dish, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. I am really, really excited to share that recipe that I kind of made up uh, last night. And it's gonna be really, really good, you guys. Um, so we are going to be making that fairly soon, and then we will get on to meal number two later on. But today, right now, but right now I am just going to finish my coffee and just go on my laptop a little for a little bit and do a little bit of work, you guys. So stay tuned in the next clip and I will talk to you then. All right, you guys, we are ready to get started on meal number one. So one thing that I love about this recipe is that it's sweet. So once in a while I do crave um, a sweet meal number one, not all the time. I would say it's kind of like 50-50, but for the most part, um, I do like your savory items like bacon and eggs. Um, but today I just kind of felt like something sweet. So as I was laying in bed last night, this is usually where I get all my ideas for recipes and um, what I'm going to be making or if something's a little bit different or something that I would like to try. 
That's when I think about all of the recipes that you guys see. I decided to combine two recipes in order to make this and I love lemon. I love lemon so much. Between lemon and coconut, those are my favorites. I love them both. So I decided that I wanted to make sweet chaffles today and I always have that recipe linked down below for my chaffles and it uses coconut flour because I am allergic to all nuts. So I can't make anything with almond flour in it. So I always use coconut flour and that recipe is always linked down below for you guys. Um, so I'm going to be making chaffles but first I am going to be making a lemon curd, a keto lemon curd, you guys. Um, so I thought of this idea because I wanted kind of like lemon raspberry waffles. That's how I originally started with this recipe and I thought that was like a really good mixture. Anything like lemon blueberry or lemon raspberry is so, so good. And so I thought that I would kind of combine the two recipes and make like a lemon uh, raspberry waffles. So that is what I'm going to be making for meal number one, you guys. So let's get started. All right, so we are just going to put this on low. And one thing that the recipe for the lemon curd calls for is um, to do it in a ceramic bowl over top. Um, I do not have one. I don't have one that fits this pan whatsoever. So I'm going to attempt it in a saucepan. I'm going to keep an eye on it. You pretty much just add all of the ingredients and then keep on whisking for about 10 minutes until it thickens. So that is what I'm going to do. So if you guys have something that will fit inside your saucepan as far as like a ceramic, maybe even smaller casserole dish or something like that, um, feel free to do that and have water underneath. Um, this is just to prevent the burning is what I'm thinking it, it's going to be, but I am going to be keeping an eye on it. And I've done things like this before as far as like melting chocolate, just right in the saucepan. So let's get started. I'm just gonna add all the ingredients first and whisk that away because literally that is all you need to do. So it is, I made the recipe um, for two servings because on this recipe you can change the amount um, if you want eight servings, if you want four servings, and I like that in recipes, so I just made this for two servings, and that is what I'm going to be making. So you will need one large egg. You will need about a, a quarter of a cup of your powdered sugar. I like using Swerve, you guys. It's always been my favorite. Um, my favorite brand, and I find it cheapest on Amazon, so I always have that linked down below in the description. It's always the cheapest and I like it because it comes right to my door. So we are going to add a quarter of a cup of that. And then we are going to use, um, it's gonna be about an eighth of a cup, probably a few teaspoons is what it's going to be of lemon juice. So we ended up having actually lobster last night and we used our lemon juice for that. I did in fact save the rind in order for the lemon zest for this recipe, but I am just going to add some um, lemon juice that comes in the packaging and I am going to use that. Then it also calls for some lemon zest like I just said and I had already grated that up really, really fine just right here. So I'm going to put that in my saucepan as well, you guys. Now I'm going to add a little bit of lemon extract because the recipe does not call for lemon extract, but I feel like, I like things really, really lemony, you guys. So I am going to use, um, I'm going to use this lemon extract. There we go, sorry you guys. Um, this is what I'm going to be using is some lemon extract because I like things really lemony. So that is what I'm going to be using. If you guys feel like you want to leave it out, um, then do so. But I just like my things really, really lemony. So I'm just going to put a little splash of the lemon extract in. And we are going to whisk this all up and we are going to whisk it for 10 minutes straight, you guys. So make sure that you have the time allotted in order to do this and to concentrate just only on this. So we are going to whisk this for 10 minutes straight until it thickens up. All right, you guys, it has been four minutes. So we are going to take these out. And they 
they are done perfectly. These ones I find like when you add the uh, maple syrup, the sugar-free maple syrup, they can come out a little bit lighter and fluffier than just leaving them if you're making like the savory ones, but they still turn out absolutely amazing. So you guys maybe can hear my air fryer in the back. I decided to make a couple slices of bacon in my air fryer that I'm going to have with this meal. Um, this meal does have quite a bit of fat just because the chaffles um, provide a lot of fat, but I also am just going to have um, a couple of pieces of bacon for the side. So I will wait until that's done. They should be cooled by then and then we can assemble our breakfast. bacon is done as well there we go that is going to be meal number one you guys look how delicious does that look oh my gosh i am so excited to try this you guys so let's give it a taste test all right you guys i'm going to slice this up and give it a taste test it looks it looks even too pretty to slice up does it not like oh my gosh you guys looks delicious all right let's cut into it and give it a taste so another thing that you guys can do is put the uh, raspberries right into the chaffles i've done that before with um, blueberries i put them right into um, the chaffles itself i just decided not to today but um you guys can also do that right this is going to be messy but it <laughs> it only lasted to be pretty for a little bit but let's taste it Mmm. Oh. You guys, the lemon is so lemony. I'm glad I added the lemon extract actually because I feel like it gives it more of a lemon flavor. Now, if you guys like lemon and you don't like yours like real lemony, um, you don't have to put the lemon ex extract in it like I did. You guys, this is... This is a keeper of a recipe, you guys. So make sure you guys try it for maybe your next brunch or Sunday brunch, you guys. Let me know if you try it. Um, the lemon curd recipe was really, really easy and it worked well even when I did it just in the saucepan. So if you guys don't have a clear, um, a clear bowl that you guys can put on top of your saucepan, just know that you can still make it work. Just make sure you keep it on low and constantly keep on stirring you guys but 
this is really really good so make sure you give it a try and let me know what you think all right but i am going to go and sit down and eat this and probably maybe even have a bang with it i'm thinking um it's just after 12 o'clock right now so it's still pretty early so i think that's what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a bang energy drink because my daughter had bought me four bang energy drinks for mother's day so All right, you guys, that breakfast meal number one was absolutely delicious. Highly recommend making that. Really, really good. I will put the calories and the net carbs on the screen right now. I'm doing net carbs today, so I will have that on the screen for you guys, but highly recommend giving this a try. I just quickly changed and I didn't do any makeup or anything with my hair, you guys. Um, but I did want to sit down and chat with you guys just for a little bit. I want to talk about where I've been at. Um, yeah, where I've been at kind of like this last week. So I've been getting a lot of questions on um, my weight and my weight loss right now at this point. And right now I'm in maintenance. So I have, I started out, my goal weight was and I stuck at, it was 133 to 135. I was at that weight for a long time. I got that to my goal weight last August of 2020. I actually stayed that weight until Christmas time. And then after Christmas time kind of was done and over because I did have four days of a cheat meal. Um, since then, it's been really, really tough for me to get back on track, not necessarily with my eating, but with my weight. Um, so I did do a 72 hour fast vlog. I will link that video here if you guys haven't seen it, but I have done a long extended fast to get myself back into ketosis and um, to get the extra weight off. So I finished that and I was successful in that um, 72 hour fast and I did lose some weight and I got back down, um, I wanna say it was like 140, somewhere around 140 ish anyways and since then i have kept that weight off um so right after i had that 72 hour fast i did gain a pound or two but consistently eating keto then i was able to lose that couple pounds and get back down to around like 140 ish is where i sit right now 139 140 and I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm really, really happy at that weight. Now, if I can lose some more and get back down to my 133, 135, that would be amazing. That's kind of my goal for summertime. But don't get me wrong, I'm happy to where I sit right now. I know a lot of people are asking me, um, like, why haven't been, I been losing weight? Or, you know, why are you so obsessive about the number? And the reason why I get obsessive is because I don't want to get that gain that weight back. That is my main focus right now. I am happy being 140. This might even be my new maintenance weight, but my channel right now is kind of maintaining. Yes, I would love to lose a, a few pounds, but it's not 100% my goal right now to really get back on that losing weight. Uh, when I got to my goal weight last year, I actually did about three months of alternate day fasting and I was successful with that. I ate every other day, I stayed keto, and it was really, really beneficial. I really don't feel like I wanna do that right now in my journey. I'm not saying that I'm like on a diet break, but I am maintaining and trying to find that maintenance level. So there, that is what I'm at right now. I do still keep my calories low. I still keep my macros the same. I definitely try to eat under 20 net carbs every day and I don't want to go to alternate day fasting right now because I'm not really that obsessive of getting to my goal weight which was 133. You know if I can stay at 140, 142 I'm happy with that too. I feel my most comfortable when I was at 132, 133 pounds. I felt good in my own skin. I felt light and lean and I was just comfortable right and now I still feel comfortable, but it's to the point where it's like um, I can feel the extra weight. It, it sounds weird and I didn't believe it until I actually got down to my goal weight that like eight or ten pounds that you could you could feel that weight. 
but you can 100% feel that weight. It almost feels like, I describe it as like a cushion. <laughs> it honestly does feel like a cushion that is around me, right? Um, and, and you can feel it. I can feel it every day, right? And sometimes I get really like obsessive about it and think, okay, maybe I'll go back to alternate day fasting and get down to that weight. Um, but I'm not gonna be that person because I can easily get carried, can get carried away with being um, obsessive about those things. Um, and like I mentioned in my 100 pound weight loss story, that is what happened. I will link that video actually down below in the description, but that is what happened when I started my journey years ago. I became really obsessive with the scale and with working out, I was working out twice a day. I was watching what I was eating. I wasn't going out on dates with my husband. And I said no to a lot of things. And I don't want to get to that point again where I'm feeling that obsessive, okay? Um, so I, I've just noticed a few questions in the, the comments below. And you know, if it seems like I'm kind of like really motivated to lose that weight and then the next video, I'm not so much and I'm kind of happy where I'm at. It's because it's true. I'm sorry if, if you guys kind of get like a misconception of what I'm doing or what I want to do. It's because I really don't even know you guys. I'll be honest. I don't really want to, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I want to go back to alternate day fasting. Today I'm feeling like I don't. I'm feeling like, you know what? I'm okay with myself. I feel like I look good. I'm at a very healthy weight. I'm in a, in a perfect healthy BMI range. Like you know, everything is really, really good. But then other days I feel like, oh man, I wish that I could get back down to my goal weight because I felt so lean and, and so light. And especially with summer coming up with tank tops and shorts, like I want to feel that way again. Right. Um, and it, it's true. It's because I really don't know exactly where I want to be at right now. Um, so I do fluctuate with those feelings every day. Um, but like I said, today I'm okay with my weight and I'm okay with eating how I eat like I am today in this video. I really don't wanna go back to alternate day fasting right now. Um, I still try to implement my intermittent fasting, but the alternate day fasting I don't feel like I wanna do at this current time. Now that, that could change. So I just kind of wanted to clarify that because there is a few questions and um, comments that I get and I'm more than happy to answer those but I just kind of wanted to make put it in a video and and just kind of address that because I have been getting a lot of questions on it. So anyways that I just wanted to clear up you guys and I wanted to know how you guys are doing. How are you guys doing um, since it is springtime and we are coming into summer? How are you guys coping with weight loss right now? Do you guys need any more of my help or more re meal recipes or just more general ideas on how to lose weight? I want to start um, exercising on more of a regular basis. That is definitely one goal that I have. Now that it's getting nicer here, I've said that in many videos before, um, and I have walked, just not a, on a consistent basis. But I wanna know from you guys and how you guys are feeling and how you're doing in your weight loss journeys. And I especially wanna know where your struggles are. So do you struggle with working out? Do you struggle with eating? Do you struggle with meal planning? What do you guys struggle with most in your weight loss journey? Let me know down below, you guys. I would love to either do a video on that or help you in any way that I can. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know where I am at right now and how I've been feeling and what I've kind of been struggling with as well too. So I will see you guys in the next segment. We are going to be making meal number two soon. So I'm excited about that. Um, I will say that it's another twist on pizza, you guys. You guys know that pizza is my favorite food. So I am going to be making kind of like um, a pizza dish, but with something different and something new. So stay tuned for that in the next clip. All right, for you guys that are new here, we have chickens. We actually have two chickens that lay eggs pretty much every day unless the weather is kind of like messed up in Canada. You never know. If it gets too cold, um, they tend not to, oh, they tend to not lay any eggs. Back, 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 back. This is just kind of like a mixture that I give them once in a while, probably three times a week. 
Um, and then I give them their regular food, which is in another container. But this one here is Yolk, and we've had her for a while, probably two years. And this is our new one, Sunshine. We got her when she was a little bit older, so she is kind of skittish. She was about six months old when we got her. But Yolk we've had since she was two days old. So she is very, very friendly. She will come even called to her name. And she flies up on you, loves, you know, to be pet and just everything she's like she's like a pet to us right like definitely a pet to us and it's just fortunate enough that they actually lay eggs and give us eggs every day don't you yoke don't you yoke good girl hi good morning good morning how is my girl how my girl how's my girl today oh my goodness the yokester the yokester oh she's so she's so friendly we love her so much and sunshine i absolutely love her coloring i absolutely love it but she's just not as friendly as yolk it really does matter if you um handle them properly like from day one um they definitely get used to that but she just wasn't she was just strictly a laying hen um she didn't even start laying eggs yet actually when we got her um but she was kind of older when we got her and she wasn't handled she was just in a coop with a whole bunch of other um hens and this is just the regular food that i also give them as well too and we usually just they're really um chickens are actually really really low maintenance so we just feed them once a day and we check to make sure that there is eggs or not and that is about it to be honest um i don't think we'll get any more we were talking about maybe getting one or two more um because they actually like they need more than one they do need um like they're very social animals very very social animals um but i think two is just enough because we do get enough eggs um ha with having two of them so with that being said let's see if we they have any eggs are you going in there to lay an egg let me check first sunshine there is nothing in that one and there is nothing in there so yolk probably or i mean sunshine probably is coming in to lay an egg so we just put golf balls in there because when they were starting to lay eggs that actually helped them to go into the nesting boxes to lay their eggs so we just have left the golf balls in there and then summertime they do like to be out in the yard and they like to catch bugs and eat the grass and eat everything that is out there so they love it so they are waiting for that to happen hopefully soon but yeah these are our chickens you guys all right we will see you girls tomorrow we're going to start making our pizza dough and i am going to be making it with the carb quick i find my carb quick off of amazon it has also the cheapest price and once again um, it also comes to your door through Amazon as well. So I always get it through Amazon. The link is always down below in the description. But we are going to start with a cup and a half of Carb Quick. And we are just going to put it into a mixing bowl here. So let's measure that out first. All right, next we are going to add a third of a cup of boiling water. So I have a little bit more in here just in case I do need more. Um, I find that sometimes a third of a cup isn't enough. So I always just have enough here in case I need to add more in case it's just not mixing well enough. So I'm going to add a third of a cup first and then I will kind of work it together because our goal is to form a dough actually, right? So we are going to put in a third of a cup of water in there first and mix it around third of a cup first and see where you're at. So I'm going to add a little bit more to my mixture there we go and I think that's going to be good so we are just going to mix it in our mixing bowl mix it all together and I have a piece of parchment paper as you can see right underneath my mixing bowl and I am going to use that in order to knead it all together and to really get it mixed and to create a dough so let's do that after everything is all well combined here there we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of carb quick on my parchment paper. Um, it's kind of just like um, used as like a flower, right? So I'm just gonna put this on my paper here a little bit. And if you guys need more, um, feel free to add more. If it gets too sticky, I'm just gonna put a little bit in my cup here 
because once I get started, I might need a little bit more. All right, so we are going to put our dough onto our parchment paper with our carb quick. All right, you guys, I feel like that is a pretty good consistency, a good dough-like consistency. Um, I find carb quick actually really, really easy to work with. Um, so it, it's not 100% the cleanest ingredients, um, but still I find it's really, really good when you're craving those little things. I have made, um, I have made cinnamon buns using this, you guys, and it absolutely tasted amazing. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually put another sheet of parchment paper over top of this, and then I'm going to roll it. All right, and then I'm just going to actually kind of make the, clean up the edges a little bit and make them kind of more of like a crust and to make it a little bit more circular and kind of roll up the edges. So I have never made um, a pizza using the carb quick. I have made, like I mentioned, cinnamon buns before and I've made cheese scones and both things turned out absolutely amazing. Um, once again, I would limit things like this. I wouldn't be making um, carb cook items every day, but definitely once or twice a week, um, especially now that I'm in maintenance. Um, you know, it doesn't, I don't find that many things bother me. Like a lot of the sugar alcohols definitely cause weight gain, like water weight, but um, in maintenance, I kind of am a little bit more lenient with that, but definitely if you guys are losing, I would highly recommend just limiting this to like once a week or so. All right, so that is done, and I'm going to put this on my baking, or on my pizza stone, so let's get that. And then we can start assembling our pizza. my oven to 425 and I'm going to put this in there I'm gonna see how it's gonna do it like oh that's my preset it oven <laughs> okay I'm gonna see how it does with like 10 minutes I'm gonna start with that and I will check on it um, and then I will let you guys know for how long I keep it in for so let's put this in the oven All right, you guys, well, that pizza is cooking. I am just going to have a little snack. So this is just um, green bell pepper that I sliced up, and then I put some cream cheese inside, and I am going to try 
my everything but the bagel seasoning that I had made um, a couple days ago. I will link that video on here on how I made it, but I haven't tasted it yet and I wanted to give it a taste test. So I'm going to put it over top of my peppers and cream cheese and see how it tastes. So we are just gonna put some on all of the peppers here. All right, let's give this a taste and see how it is, you guys. Mmm, that's really good. Honestly, you guys, I think I like my homemade everything but the bagel seasoning instead of the store brought, but I feel like this is, I know it's dried ingredients, but I feel like it's more fresh um, when you buy like the bulk and make it yourself. That's just me, but this tastes really, really good. And so give it a try, you guys. I will have that, um, I will have actually that video linked down below because it's gonna be easier to get at to have a look at the recipe. All right, you guys, this is it out of the oven. I left it in there, it was about 11 or 12 minutes. And about halfway through, I actually turned the temperature down to 400 degrees. So this is what it is looking like right out of the oven. And this looks like a legit pizza, you guys. So. A lot of you probably on keto have maybe tried the fathead dough and have made pizzas. However, that is made with almond flour, so I cannot have that because I do have a nut allergy to all nuts. Um, so I thought this would be worth a try. You guys know that pizza is my favorite food. I've made it a lot of different varieties, but I thought I would give the carb quick dough a try. So let's let it cool and then we will take a bite. All right, you guys. I have sliced it up into six slices. Now, the good thing about the Carb Quick that I like is that it's high in fiber, right? So um, probably for this whole entire pizza, I would say it would be about eight to 10 net carbs for this whole entire pizza. The one thing with the Carb Quick is I do find um, I do get fuller because it does contain a lot of fiber. Um, so I'll see how much I eat of this. Um, if I eat the whole thing, that's perfect. If I eat half of it, that's fine as well too, but let's give it a taste test, you guys. I can't believe how much this actually like turned out like regular pizza dough. Um, like I said, I know a lot of people do have the flat fat head dough, but I can't have that because um, it does have the almond flour. So I thought this would kind of be the next best thing as far as texture. Um, let's give it a taste test though and see how it tastes. The cheese is still really hot. But that tastes pretty good, actually. I would say it's not really like your regular pizza dough. I don't know if like you can ever really get it to taste exactly like pizza dough, let's be honest, right? Um, but I think like this is pretty good. Like this is pretty close to like the, the real consistency of it anyways. I feel like the taste of the crust is just a little bit off. The one thing I think that I would add next time would be like, either with the sauce on the pizza or in the dough would be like oregano or some basil even just to kind of give that more of like an authentic pizza flavoring because I feel like the crust is kind of bland right um so maybe it's just like a case of putting that when we put our sauce on that we could put some basil and some oregano I feel like that would be um give it a lot more flavor I like putting salt on my pizza as well too I feel like it really really bring, brings out the flavor on the toppings um so feel free to do that as well. If you've never tried it, just give it a try. I promise you guys, you will love having salt on your pizza. And I'm not meaning like pouring a lot of salt on it. I just mean like a little sprinkle and it really, really tastes so, so good. But this is really good, you guys. And like I said, I'm a huge pizza fan. So whenever I can get to try a new pizza, pizza recipe, I'm all over that. I love it so much. So this is pretty good. I would definitely make it again. So give it a try, you guys. Of course, the train is passing when I wanna close out this video. <laughs> All right, you guys, that is the end of the video. I ended up having about four slices of that pizza. It was really, really good. Um, so I will put the total calories and the total net carbs on the screen for that pizza that I had. And that is all I'm going to be eating. I'm going to be trying to, like I said, still doing the intermittent fasting. Um, so that is all I'm going to actually be eating today. And I feel quite full, so that's a good sign as well too, right? If you can kind of have those meals that will make you full and have lots of fiber 
are in them. Things that are high in fat, those are the meals that are gonna keep you full for a long, long time, all right? Thank you so much, you guys, for spending the day with me and having a look to see what I ate today. I really, really loved both of these recipes that I tried today. So that encourages you guys to try new recipes. And if there's something that you're craving, try to make it keto. I know a lot of people are saying about the keto and that you can't lose weight, but you know what? If you're really craving something and you wanna keep it like low sugar, you kind of do have to keto it, and that does mean sugar alcohols. By no means am I saying have it every day for every meal. I guarantee you, you won't lose weight eating those things, but once in a while, I do recommend it. That was same with that meal number one that I made. That was so good and I was just craving something sweet because once in a while I do get that craving for something sweet for my first meal. So make sure you give it a try, you guys. Let me know what you guys think of all these new recipes that I've been trying. I hope you're enjoying them. I enjoy making them. I always say that these videos are the ones that helped me to lose over 100 pounds. I Googled a lot of keto recipes. I watched a lot of YouTubers that make keto meals all the time. So I really enjoy making these uh, videos for you guys. So thank Thank you so much for being here. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and make sure that you're hitting that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.